who he is and, and who we are in him. We're grateful to God that he has shown us his righteousness and, and not, the, not just that he's shown us his righteousness, but that we're interested in his righteousness. He shows everyone his righteousness, and, but most people are not interested in the righteousness of God. Amen. 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 So Amen. We find ourselves struggling with holiness because people uh, are more in love with the idea of God than they are with God. And they're more in love with the idea of righteousness than they are uh, with righteousness. And people love to pursue uh, the blessings of God, but they don't want the holiness and the righteousness and the truth of God. And I've learned something uh, that people are not interested in righteousness. And people, some will talk, most won't talk about it. Uh, some folks may talk about good moral living, but folks will not talk about the righteousness of God. And, and they're not interested in the righteousness of God. And so, therefore, they never accomplish the righteousness of God. Uh, and that's because we have gone away from teaching people what thus saith the Lord. Man, we we don't mind telling folks what they ought to do to support the church. All right now. But telling people what they have to do to make it into glory is something that simply is unpopular. And man, it's unfortunate that most people reject preaching and teaching that has to do uh, with holiness. All right now. They don't want to hear about the truth of God, and, and they don't want to hear that the wages of sin is dead, what the gift of God is eternal. Like people don't want to hear those messages, but we cannot stop preaching them because they are unpopular. We preach them because they are unpopular. Yes, and God's holiness has never been popular. Man, man has rejected God, has rebelled against God since creation. Man, ever since Adam and Eve decided to listen to the serpent rather than listen to God, man, man has remained in trouble. And it seems that we have no desire to escape from the trouble that we have been banished to. And Christ came that we might be redeemed from the curse of sin, the curse of death. And, and it seems that we have no interest in being redeemed from the throes of the lake of fire. And, and, and people just don't have the enthusiasm for God. Uh, uh, you know, there are some folks they have great enthusiasm for their church. And they love being the president of the usher board and, and the chief deacon. And, and they love being the president of the, of the uh, 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 deacon board. And, and they love being the head of the trustee board. But when it comes to being members of the body of Christ, when it comes to being those are preoccupied with the righteousness of God. Uh, we don't find that too often in today's church world. Uh, folks will talk more about their preacher than they will about Jesus. Lord have mercy. Amen. 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 Folks would love to talk about how wonderful their preacher is. When was the last time you told somebody how good Jesus is? When was the last time you rendered your praise to Jesus? And so these things are happening in today's world. But we are responsible for our own soul salvation. We are responsible for saving ourselves from this untoward generation. It is our responsibility to turn away from the wickedness of the church world. When I'm talking about secularism. I'm talking about those who practice religion in the house of God and try to substitute religious activity, ceremony, and ritual for relationship with Christ just cannot, will not work. Amen. You must be born again of water and of the Spirit. And you must live a holy, clean, sanctified, righteous lifestyle set apart from the ways of this world. Amen. And, and so, so many people just don't want to do the righteous thing. But they love the ritual. We love ceremony. The Bible talks about pomp. And we love pomp. We love to, to parade ourselves before people to try to 
prove to somebody else that God is working so powerfully through me, in me, for me, all of these kinds of things. So instead of simply being uh, caught up in the righteousness of God, I don't have to force God on anybody. They see the Christ in me, the hope of glory. All right. And when they see the Christ in you, they will either be compelled to follow him or they will reject him. Right. Amen. But you cannot walk around and talk about how much you love the Lord and on one side of your mouth and on the other side you're uh, uh, speaking ungodly, unholy, unrighteous words. Amen. Right. So you have to make sure uh, that your profession is consistent uh, uh, with your lifestyle. Oh, I, I love Jesus. Well, your lifestyle does not indicate that you are in love with him, your lifestyle more re closely reflects one who does not care much about Jesus. And, and let me make this clear now, because if we don't love his righteousness, guess what? Mm -hmm. You don't love All him. right, that's yeah, right. You, got to, you have to love righteousness in order for you to love Jesus. If you don't love righteousness, you don't love Jesus. Right. And you don't know him because he is our righteousness and so it all begins with the righteousness of god and all right it's all right and i thank god today i had a, i had a dream y'all had a dream and i don't I, I guess it was early this morning and i had a dream and i didn't want to wake up i had a dream i got visited me in my sleep and i didn't want to wake up I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to wake up from that dream. Y'all understand? Amen. Me? I Amen. My pastor got to die. I didn't want to die. And I just didn't want to wake from that dream. And I was in a church service. And we were up north somewhere. And the whole, well, let me correct that. We were with folks from up north. And the Holy Ghost came in the house. And, uh, you know, when the Lord wants to move on you, through you, and for you, and here the devil come to try to mess with that blessing. That's right. And even in the dream, here the devil come trying to mess with the blessing. So and I, I'm not I'm not a dreamer. I don't I don't talk about my dreams. I don't remember much about dreams at all. But this was so powerful, y'all. I, I wanted to stay. I could have slept all day and stayed in that dream. I would have been just fine. And in the beginning of the service, it was prayer time, and they beckoned me to come pray. And another preacher. Bold guarded and jumped up to the microphone to pray. Now, I, I tell you, the devil, I tell you, the devil to mess with you in your dreams, too. And it didn't affect me. And I went into worship mode. Well, you know how dreams are. You go from one scene to the next uh -huh. without there no transitions. Right. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Next thing I know, I am just worshiping y'all. And the Holy Ghost is moving. And I'm, I'm worshiping, I'm dancing in the spirit, I'm dancing all over the church. And, 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 and I'm, 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 I'm in worship and I'm dancing and I'm praising God and, and, and I'm, I'm seeing the Holy Ghost in, in my dream as I'm praising God. It's so powerful. And it's just, it, it, it was a feeling, y'all, it was like moving. It was like just all God, you know, just all, it was just that was in God. And I'm, and I'm going forth in worship in the, in, the, in the dream, in the church service. And it was just flat out, just worship, worship. I'm dancing, but it wasn't the physical experience. It was a spiritual experience. And, and it, it, it seemed like I was getting closer and closer to God. And, 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 the, and the more I worshiped, the, the more I could see just God just coming, just, just the glory of God, just I was just all up in the glory of God. Then I woke up. Lord, have ah. Lord, I wanted to cry. It was such a powerful experience. So powerful. And when I when I woke up, it was I got up like a half hour later than I should have. Uh -huh. Really, uh, thank God my wife waking up this morning. The Lord knows I, that dream was so good, and it felt so good to have been in in fellowship with Jesus in my sleep. And and, and I woke up and I felt yeah, I felt so good. It was just oh, I, I felt like crying because I wanted that. I wanted, Lord, I want that right there. You know, it, it's, it, it, it put something deep down on the inside or reminded me of something. Man, when we get to pressing towards the mark for the prize, the high calling of God, 
when we return to Jesus and we come to his house and not just for ritual and, and my thought for today is going to be from ritual to relationship Amen. and not just coming to church for ritual but coming for true relationship and then we don't want to come here and go through the motions we want to come here and allow God to go through us and we don't want to come just to say we've been and we have our same order of service every time we come the same old thing happens and we want to be able to come into God's house and, and truly feel the anointing we, we, I, I know we get the word, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that, but the anointing, where we feel the presence of God when we enter his house, Amen. where there is an outpouring, a Holy Ghost outpouring in our midst, where we truly forget about ourselves and begin to focus, to concentrate, to meditate on Jesus and how good he's been to us. Amen. We want the Holy Ghost to be all up in us. We want it to pour out of our skin. Yes, we want, we want it to be so powerful in his house that when a sinner comes through the doors, they will be able to feel the anointing of the Holy yeah. Ghost. Not the emotion of the service, but I'm talking about the true bona fide presence of Jesus in the midst of his Now, our challenge is to get beyond where we are, to 
to the spiritual place where God is able then to promote us spiritually to a place. I'm not talking about we come lay hands and folks be healed. No, I'm strictly talking about where we understand that God lives on the inside. Not a hock of a shot, ta, ta, ta. not an emotional thing in the church service. Outside of the building is where it begins. See, there are so many distractions by the time we come to God's house. We have been so incredibly distracted until it is difficult for most of us to get in the mode of praise. And so we hardly ever achieve worship. But when we learn how to put our minds on the people stay on Jesus outside of the house, that way when we come into the house of God, we come to give God all that he is due. Because we have spent our time outside of God's house, still in his presence, giving him praise, thanking him for his many blessings. Where our lifestyles are consistent with hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Because we understand what the Bible says, that if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, Jesus promised that we shall be filled. Amen. And so we Hello. come to God's house to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Every time we come, we want God to fill us some more. God, fill me the more with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't leave me in the same place all of the time. God, I want to grow in grace. I want to grow in you. I want you to be my every thought. God, when I lay down at night, I want you to be on my mind. When I wake up in the middle of the night, I want to wake up with you on my mind, Jesus. When I wake up in the morning, Jesus, I need you on my mind. When I go about my day, Lord, I need you on my mind. Hallelujah. Because we understand what the scripture says. That will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted him in thee. God, I need my mind stay on you because I need perfect peace. I need the blessings of the Holy Ghost. And it starts with my thoughts. It starts with my mind. And so we've got to get back to the place where God is first in our lives, where the, the worldly activity has to decrease so that Jesus can increase. Lord, I want you to disturb my sleep. Hallelujah. We need to wake up at night and worship. Wake yourself up talking to Jesus. Hallelujah. Fall back asleep for some sweet, gentle rest because your mind is staying on him. But we, we become we become wedded to ritual in God's house. Yeah, yeah, people love to, they love ritual, they love ceremony, they love pomp, they love circumstance. These are the things that we're attracted to. Folks are offended when you don't do, quote unquote, the service the right way. But you can live like the devil and uh, nobody's offended. All right. Now this is troubling. It ought to trouble the people of God. Amen. Amen. We, we, we have structures of, of worship in church that are that are not required or are not uh, uh how about this are, are not uh, uh blueprinted by the bible we don't our service is not according to some ceremony that has been written in this word no 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 it's not that's not what it is but we that we have our traditions and that's okay but we love those traditions more than we love the traditions all right, of all right. and that's not okay so we have to get back to the place or some of us have never been there, get to the place uh, where we fall in love with relationship with Christ. So, so we want to go from ritual to relationship. Is that all right? It's all right. And so in the book of Romans, we're going to go very familiar past chapter number eight, uh, book of Romans, we're going to begin reading at verse number one. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Let's stop right there. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, see, condemnation keeps 
most of us, if not all of us, from achieving the relationship that God has ordained for us to enjoy in him. Yes, and so the, and, and so often folks are walking with condemnation and have no clue. Don't you know that when you have sin on the line, it clutters your communication with Jesus? Amen. Yes, when you practice sinful lifestyles and you do ungodly things and your mind is not staying on Jesus, you, you compromise your relationship with him. So that, that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So what we're trying to do is get back into Christ. We want our lives hid with Christ in God. Oh God, I think. Yeah. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Too often our flesh supersedes our spirit man. And so our walk has to do a whole lot with our uh, carnal ways and our carnal thoughts preoccup we're preoccupied with. And we do more carnal, fleshly things than we do godly things. And, and these things uh, bring about condemnation. See, regardless of how you try to, to, to or people try to uh, 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 reject the truth and the righteousness of God, it, it still is what it is. Amen. And, 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 and your soul knows, your soul knows amen, the amen, right amen. of God. All you right. may have a messed up spirit, but your soul understands the righteousness of God. And unfortunately, we allow the spirit in us to get us into trouble because we walk in the flesh. We walk in ways that are not consistent with the holiness of God. Well, we need to go from ritual to relationship. And it begins, in order for us to develop relationship, we have to understand with whom we're attempting to develop relationship. Right. And we're attempting to develop relationship with Jesus. And his nature is holy. His nature is righteous. Amen. He is sanctified. He is perfect. And so we're trying to get in relationship with him, which means we must become like him. That's why they call us Christians first at Antioch, because the people were like Christ. Christ. Oh God, I thank you. All and right, so now. we want to be the epitome of the word. I want to be like Jesus, which means now that I need all condemnation on the inside moved out of me. And the only way to, 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 to get rid of condemnation is to get rid of sin. If you don't get rid of the sin, your soul knows the difference. Your spirit may play tricks on you, but your soul is crying out to God. It's uttering, but your spirit is muting the move of the soul. And so, we, we got to get back to the place where there is no condemnation. And the only way that can happen is we must be in Christ Jesus, walking not after the flesh, but after the spirit. spirit. The spirit is the, the Holy Ghost. So verse number two. For, for the, the law, come on. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from yes. the law of sin and death. Now see, there is no excuse. Oh God, for the law of the spirit of life. We're pursuing the spirit of life. We will not settle for death. People, now this is what messes me up. People get sick and go to the doctor and they declare, I'm healed, I'm not going to die, I'm not having it. Okay, you're declaring life. But don't you think it's more, it's more, it's better or it's wiser to declare life in the spirit, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. We will be bound to the law of sin and death. Our proclamation is can't nobody live like that. Ain't nobody perfect. You can't wait a minute. But the Bible says for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. I'm free from the law of sin and death because I live in the law of the spirit of life in Christ 
Jesus. So there's no more condemnation because we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We, we live according to laws and then we choose, oh God help me, we choose which laws we're going to follow. Lord, I, I don't want to do the righteous thing. So your mind tells you to follow the law of, of death, the law of sin. Well, guess what? You have a choice. You can follow the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Jesus. That is a choice. And those who decide to follow the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus are, are, they, 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 they are escaping the spirit of condemnation. Thank Lord, you, Lord. I thank you for the law thank of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Have made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes, I don't care what the doctor says. I feel well. That's great, but what about your spirit? Oh God, we want our flesh to be healed. I know the doctor said I got cancer, but I'm proclaiming my health. That's good. I don't criticize that. But what's more important, the healing of your body or the healing of your soul? Why are we not so bold to make the proclamation of healing when it comes to our spirit, man? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so the things that I used to do, I don't do those things oh, no, anymore. The no places, oh God, I, I used to go, I don't go to the walk I used to walk, the talk I used to talk, the life I used to live. I don't live anymore because my life is hid oh, with you. Christ in God. And so I'm no longer my own, but I belong to Jesus because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Earth number three, come on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do yes. is that it was weak through the flesh. Yes. God said in his own son yes. in the life of the sin Yes, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Now the Lord could not do it. Now today, folks say you're legalistic when you talk about holiness. Uh, see, this is this is the Let's brilliance see. of the devil. Let's he's a Lord. brilliant idiot. But but in terms of way, the people, he's brilliant. But in terms of hellfire, he's an idiot. Oh God, I think he's on his way to the lake, and he's trying to take us with him. And so he uses the, his his own evil brilliance to manipulate man into believing that it's okay for me to do what I want to do. And then when you go back and say, well, but the ways of God are holy, separate, set apart. And people begin to say, yeah, but that's legalism. God wants us to have fun. And he wants us to enjoy this. Like, I need to read that in the Bible because it's not there. If you have it, please send it to me. Call me or write me. Let me know that it's in this Bible. There is no such thing as fun. People of God, people come with them. The old doctrine today talking about you need balance. There is no balance. We're not Go ahead, in, in between the law of the spirit of life and the law of sin and death. That's called balance. We want to tip the scale. Oh God. We want to be all up in the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I need my thoughts to be holy. I need my words to be holy. I need my lifestyle to be holy. Hello. God, thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Now, so when you talk about holiness, yeah. they say, well, now that's legalism. Yeah, see, that's the law. That's that's the Old Testament. Wait a minute, hold it. Now, the same preachers who talk about holiness being the Old Testament, when it comes to tithing, that's Old Testament. Ah. They, don't, they don't condemn that. Man, I don't you better I, go I ahead and talk that now. But it's amazing how you pick and choose what you want to live in this Bible. All right, now. But the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That means when the devil comes, with his doctors, I ignore them because I'm free from the law of sin and death. God has given me defenses against all of these wicked and damnable uh, ways and doctrines. This heresy is being taught in God's house today. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Oh God, the law was weak through the flesh. Flesh. Mm -hmm. 
The law was weak through the flesh, yeah. not through the spirit. All right, now. <laughs> Woo! For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Yeah, see, man tried to redeem himself to God through the flesh. So the law couldn't do it because it was weak because of the flesh. Yes. What Paul writes says, I am, I am sick, unrighteous. But the law is righteous. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I just, I just right. preached this the other night. Right. I am spiritual. I am the, the I am carnal. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. But the law is spiritual. Amen. Uh, all right. See, I'm carnal. Y'all, y'all listen to me. Amen. So what the law Let's... could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. I'm carnal. Uh, but the law, Paul writes, is spiritual. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He sent his own son to look like us, to redeem us. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. And so now, now, the law could not do it because it was weak through the flesh. And so Jesus came and condemned sin in the in flesh. In the flesh. Yeah, yeah, listen to oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, the, the law was weak because they were trying to accomplish God's will through the law. Jesus came and took that same old flesh that made the law weak uh-huh. and condemned sin uh-huh. with that same old flesh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. God sent 